and welcome! It's launch day! Yay! It's Yay. launch day of issue four of this, this beauty. Um, so Claire and I, I'm Hannah Lisa, by the way, if you don't know me, we're here to chat about all things issue four, show you the samples, answer any questions that you might have, be they, I don't know, anything pattern related, issue related, anything you want me to show specifically on the samples, anything, anything, anything. at all. Anything. Um, we'll share what we'll be casting on because I think we both will be casting on something. Yeah. Um, like yeah. Something. So welcome to this launch celebration video Yay. if you actually are like a first time viewer we're making stories by the way <laughs> <laughs> jumping right in and very professional we are as well super professional so like my shirt is doing weird shit <laughs> <clears throat> this is all about knitting <laughs> not about other things no well it can be about some other things but today is about issue yeah, four that's true you're saving me thank you so much <laughs> okay so so let's talk well, about issue four so issue yes. four is as you might have guessed the fourth issue of our biannual magazine which is called making stories magazine um it's 130 one, 100 132 pages <laughs> um, of knitting goodness and articles and beautiful photos without a single ad because everything that we do is completely ad free. And this is out now. So allow me a little, like a tiny, teeny, tiny sales pitch before we go into any of the really good stuff. If you want this, you can get it now in our web shop as a single copy in the print version, which is what we both have in our hands. And um, you can also get it as a digital version in our web shop. And if you're able to access Ravelry, it's uploaded there as well. And there are subscription options available. So if you really like this, um, you can get a two issue or a four, four issue subscription. And last, but very certainly not least, this issue is in stock with many of our lovely stockists. I think we're approaching the 200 these days. 200 stockists worldwide. That's so nice. So check out our stockist list on the website to see if your local yarn shop carries us or if there is one close to you that you'd like to support. We highly, highly encourage it because we love yarn shops and we love it if you buy from them because it helps yeah. them keep running. So we love yay. a yarn shop. Love a yarn shop. Do you? we love a yarn yeah. shop? They're very dangerous, but we love them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I just mention one thing before we go yes. off? If you're buying the digital version, if you bought previous digital versions and you've been a little frustrated because they were a double page spread, um, all our digital version now is single page spread. Because I know it got a little tricky if people wanted to print certain bits out, if you want to look at a chart. So all single page, you're good to go. Ooh, which sort of triggers another point that I think we should mention before we dive into the pattern things, because we've done a few updates to the website yesterday, yes. which I believe um, are really good. <laughs> so I want to share that. <laughs> <laughs> they are really good. I love them. I love the um, So, um, so there's there's two main things. Um, uh, one is that uh, we now have pattern pages for each pattern that is in issue four on the website. So if you're familiar with Revelry, you know that how on Revelry, you know, when you go on a pattern page, you have all of the information about sizes and measurements and yardage and all of that and lots of photos. You'll find the exact same thing on our website now um, because we all know about the Revelry accessibility issues and we felt that it would be really 
good to have that information available someplace else as well as well it's still all on Revelry, but it's also now on our website so that when you click on the issue for publication page which is in the little drop down um in the in the navigation bar at the top of the website you'll see all of the patterns and you can click through and then see which yarn we used how much yarn you would need to knit uh, you would need to knit the size that you want to knit etc um and lots more photos and it's that is the one thing that we did and the other thing is that the website now has a search function oh <gasps> It's I don't know if you're if you're like me. I, I I looked at our website. I was like, why don't we have a search function? A few weeks ago, <laughs> and I was like, I would it it would actually be really good if we have a search function, and especially now with the pattern pages, because you know, if you're then searching for a pattern, you can actually search for a pattern. Yes, um, which makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So um, again, in the navigation bar, you'll see the well-known magnifying glass icon and you can search the entire website you can search by pattern name designer name uh you can also search for blog posts you can it search you can search for anything hopefully you'll find what you're looking for if you're not because this is a new feature on the website do send us an email and we'll try our best to fix it <laughs> Okay, <laughs> Claire's like, oh my god, Annalisa, this is a great launch video. It is a great launch video. It's good to tell people. I agree. Yeah. It's a good okay. So good. Let's talk about the magazine. Yes. I'm excited. Subverting the norm. Yep. Look at the cover. So I'm just going to jump in and say, I know I shouldn't play favorites, um, but the photo shoot of this one is one of my favorites because it's so nice. Where was it at again? Um, it was the market hall. It was hall at a market hall. Yeah, there's a market hall, a few tr like train stations, well, Berlin train stations um, away from where I live and work. And it's an old market hall um, that's kind of slowly being converted. Like it's not super gentrified yet. There's mm a different market hall in Berlin. If you're based in Berlin or you've been to Berlin, you probably know of that. It's called Markthalle 9. Um, but that's not where we shot, um, where we did the photo shoot. Uh, that one is called Arminios Markthalle. And it's it was such a wonderful place. It's such a cool place. It's filled with little cafes. Yeah, that was like a little Italian place. And then they have veggie stands and flowers and a little book antique shop with just boxes of books and and all of the like just really it's just really nice so and nice. Um, uh we we always contact the people um who own the property that we want to do our photo shoots in first because obviously you need permission right and yeah. you usually also pay for using a location because it's commercial it's a commercial photo shoot we're using the the photos in um in a product at the end mm. and the people were so nice they were so supportive and super kind so i absolutely loved it oh that's so um, nice and it's stunning like there's gorgeous um just little i'm ceiling. trying to find yeah, that, that, that is, is the gorgeous. picture that I was looking for. It's yeah, it Isn't was that absolutely beautiful? stunning. Now, yeah. it looks like it could have been an old railway station, that kind of appeal yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, true. I don't know. Maybe it was at some point. I don't think so. I think it's really one of those, um, one of those old market halls. Look at <laughs> hey, we did <laughs> <laughs> snap. <laughs> yep. Um. So yeah, it was it was really it was really nice, and um, we had the opportunity to do the photo shoot um, when the cafes and such were still closed. So that was really that was really nice. So closed yeah. as in like we did the photo shoot. <clears throat> I think in February, so before Corona. I think during during the lockdown, this market hall obviously was closed, but um, yeah. 
yeah, it was it was nice. It was nice and quiet, which is always I always like that for a photo shoot. Yeah, because I imagine. Than, I mean, it's nice to have like a bit of an atmosphere, but I bet you get people coming up to you all the time. Kind yeah, of must slow yeah. the process down a little bit. Yeah, and I also, for me, what matters most to me is that the model feels comfortable, and I find that it's easier to sort of get into a groove. Um, yeah, if there's not that many people around. Um, so, so, so can we can we talk about Lena for a second? Yeah, I so I'm gonna hold up this picture as well. Isn't she gorgeous? So, um, this is Lena. Lena has been a supporter of our work for a very, very long time. She's been a test noter for numerous publications. Um, and so nice. So nice. Um, Lena actually introduced us to our model from issue two, Theresa. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we chatted about issue two, she said, well, you know, if you ever consider um, working with me, I would also model. And I'm like, hell yes, yeah. I'll book you for <laughs> issue four. So <laughs> <laughs> done. Uh, done. Um, and, and it was such a pleasure to work with Lena. I mean, I mean, she's just oh she's so beautiful i could look at her pictures all day long and she has such a she has such a vibrant love and some of my favorite pictures of her are when she's just like someone said something funny and she has this absolutely contagious contagious love like here like that picture i love that picture That's i my love favorites. it yeah. i love it um so Thank you so much, Lena. I have no idea if you're watching this, but um, thank you so much for working with us on this. Like you really, oh, you made fun. this shine. You made the samples shine. Um, yeah. Oh, it's perfect. I absolutely love it. I'm really obsessed with looking through it because I literally only just got my copy a couple of days ago. Because so I was like, oh God, we're doing the YouTube live on Tuesday. And I don't even have a copy of the magazine. So hmm. yay. So I've been obsessively, I keep flicking through it and um, reading yeah. the article because you know I know what's in the magazine I know who the photos and the model but it's different once you get it in your mitts that is true so that is really true excited. that is why I love print don't yes. get me wrong I like the digital versions but there's yeah. just something to to print that is yeah I don't know I yeah. like the digital versions I think the handy especially now you can put them like if you have an iPad and things, you can kind of, and for charts and zooming in, I love it for all that stuff. But to be honest, if I'm knitting, it's because I'm having time away from the yeah. laptop because we spend a lot of time sure. on our laptops. So I don't really ha like having another thing open, yeah. which is, yeah. although since I've been knitting my petiole and having that open, which I've loved, Tilly keeps sitting on it. So she comes and just like, sits on the she magazine likes it. so she does like it but still she shouldn't do it yeah but. um by the way people you can send us questions right so if yes. you have any questions uh send them send them our way um Renata. oh hi renata oh hi renata it's lovely to see you <gasps> Alrighty, shall we go through through the patterns what do you say yes Definitely. Right. Do you want to go through each of the patterns in this, or are you going to show the samples? I was going to suggest uh, you sort of you you do the magazine portion. So we start at the beginning and talk a little okay. bit about each pattern. And I have the samples here, and I'll just I'm just going to show the pattern, like the samples. That's a good idea. We're very organized. So we are. We are. Although you know, at times. I'm going to butcher the names because I'm terrible. That is fine. So you tell me when I say it wrong. So, Taco, Taco. Ta I would say Tauco, but that's also Tauco. I don't know. It's like German. It's Finnish. Uh, so, so yes, yeah. Not all in English. So this one is so exciting. So this is Sarah Nardlung, and the yarn is Gilt, and I'm so obsessed with it. These are the photos. Yeah. And Look the, at that. And it's 
so you could kind of see that on the photos already so this is a fully reversible hat so this is one yes. side and you can turn it and we're the other side so so this side is stockinette and the other side is this gorgeous lace pattern and i'm so obsessed with this hat let me tell you like it's it's I just love it. it i absolutely love it and sorry has outdone herself with this one yet again so um you you start at the bottom um you knit the brim which is a two color brioche um which i really like i really like two color brioche i think Ooh. like especially in a more rustic yarn um yeah. it's such a nice brim and it's such a nice idea because the way that she's designed it is that you fold it up so so this is sort of this is how long it's so cozy. it is it's so cozy um and then you kind of split the stitches and you basically knit two hats you knit the lace hat and then you knit the stockinette hat and um you do crown shaking and everything and so it's super sleek like you don't have to sew anything or seam anything or or like knit a separate lining or anything it's all one one piece and that's so cool that's what makes it really reversible and the other thing that i absolutely love is what this does to to the fabric because of the lace like the little you know eyelets the yarn mm -hmm. overs you can see the the lining through it or like what is here now the lining the stockinette portion it's you know so like cool it's so it doesn't really show up on camera but the um the sample is knit in a light natural gray and then sort of like a corally dusty pink um and it's so good and it gives such a nice dimension almost to the head like it's i love I, it i love it because um, it could really easily if the lace had been any more complicated or it had been something else in the background like it can verge on getting fussy i could see like yeah. if someone said to me they're gonna do a lace hat but it's also gonna have a lining thing i'd be like in my head oh, could end up looking a bit like like a tea cozy type thing yeah and it doesn't it's just all the choices she's made with yeah. the yosh so, um it's so good i love it yeah um i will say if you're knitting this um from my experience with the testers really do swatch both the brioche mm -hmm. and the stockinette or lace section um because you want to make sure that this actually works together and like just from my personal experience my brioche gauge is is way different we'll give you tips on how to me measure brioche gauge because it's a little bit different to you know like just measuring stocking and gauge in the magazine um, yeah i'm not i've only ever knit brioche once so i'm not super up on it <gasps> is that your little swatch if you started i swatched for it i swatched oh. for it and i'm so going to sit down on the sofa with a cup of tea tonight and cast this on uh i haven't measured yet and this is not a great example for a swatch but i couldn't wait and i just wanted some have ballpark numbers whether I can I should guess. people this is um this is what you can do it I don't advise you to do it this is mom Hannah Lisa doesn't have a ton of time time <laughs> wants to swatch so I swatched the brioche I rib like the the two the two color rib and then uh basically split the stitches and 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 knit a bit of stock in it um I did swatch in the round though because it's important that you swatch mm. in the round if you're gonna be knitting yes. something in the round. So I just wanted to show this because I think it's so cute. That is so cute. <laughs> it just looks so nice. Can we talk about that colour combo as well? I love those colours together. So I already said this in our last in our last um YouTube live. Um I snatched the remaining yarn from the original sample so sometimes designers will send us uh partial skeins that they've already worked with and in this case sorry sent us the re like the skeins that she had used to knit up the the hat um usually if it's full skeins we 
stash them away and then give them away to you mm -hmm. um if it's if they're already you know broken into i don't feel comfortable doing that no. so in this case they I should like, be used yeah they need um, to be used yeah so as claire said this is a uh, gould it's a danish uh yarn company they do all natural uh all natural dyeing and it's on their new zealand's lama wilt which is lamb's wool from new zealand um and it's i think uh the gray is actu actual actually well, the natural color it's like a light heather gray mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and the corally salmon color i think is dyed on that um because it's also heathered it's beautiful it's got the flex and it's so nice yeah. i mm -hmm. love that i love it when um i love yarn i like it when yarn's dyed on just like a like a bright base because that can look really nice but there's something about when it's on like a natural gray base mm. oh, that just looks because it just seems i don't know so much more complex a color yeah so yeah i love it oh hi lena lena is actually watching yay hi lena yeah. and That's hi so marla welcome back marla. Yay. oh this is so nice you fellas Oh, I love it. All right, let's move on to the next pattern. We have a lot of patterns to go to get we through. We do, we do. Oh. Sarcaptors. Oh dun, my God. Dun, dun, dun. I love the name of this one. Marina named this right. one, didn't she? Oh, yeah, she did. She asked me, she asked me, she had a different name suggestion, which I've forgotten. And then she was like, but my heart is really in Sarcaptors. I was like, <laughs> it's all. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. I love it. All right, so let me let me stand up so that you can see the sweater in its oh. full glory. I actually knit this one. I knit this sample. You did, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I forgot about I that. I did. Um, well done. Thank you. I'm 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 impressed with my color work. <laughs> it's really I love really I love color knitting color well work. Done. Um, <laughs> uh this yarn is also very very well suited for color work okay um mm -hmm. tell me about sarcactus what what i'm gonna try and show what you're talking about i'm gonna read a little bit of the quote that marina put in here because i think it's cool and she said the bold color work design on the yoke hips and wrists of this jumper is inspired by the flora and textiles of northwestern argentina the central motif recalls the cactuses in the Cardenas National Park in Salta province. And the geometric designs are loosely based on the weaving styles of the region, which has often inspired me on visits to family and friends. Isn't that nice? I love it. I love that because it feels like there's a little story just kind of like knitted in there. Yeah. And I can absolutely. totally see that like the cacti and the yeah i just love it it's so nice it's like slightly whimsical but mm -hmm. wearable whimsical is what i would call it for totally, me wearable I, whimsical yeah for me too and it's not something that i would usually i don't tend to go for prints or stuff like that so but i mm -hmm. would totally wear this um because i think it's not it's not mm -hmm. very much in your face um and yeah, as Claire said, so it has the color work in the yoke, um, and then at the wrists and at the at the hips. Um, so nice! It's so beautiful, and I there are a couple it. of details that I want to point out that I think make this very special. So one is um, that the neckline is actually folded over, so you have a really clean, um, clean. Uh, edge edge yes thank you for that <laughs> word that was what i was looking for it's like uh so you have a really clean edge and it looks like it, it it looks it just looks really really good um yeah you have short row shaping at the back of the neck after you've knit the ribbing which makes this fit really well mm -hmm. and then you have this tiny portion it's already color work you can kind of see the triangles here that connects the uh, contrasting color neckline with the yoke, um, which I, like I think it. just creates such a nice flow. And you actually have the same mm -hmm. thing uh, at the 
at the bottom. Um, but it's not just that harsh line because exactly, wouldn't, exactly, it wouldn't work with the color work if it was just kind of yeah. like harsh. So yeah, yeah. So I I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, I knit the sample because Marina was knitting another sample uh, in a different size at that time. Um, and let me tell you, I loved working with that yarn. This is the Mendip. Is this the four ply or the DK? The DK. DK. Yeah. So this is Marina's own yarn that she has spun specifically. Um, and it's coming from sheep on the Mendip Hills, quite close to where she lives. Um, and it's, it's, I can't say, I like this yarn is just insanely good. It's so it's gorgeous. good. It's maybe my desert island yarn. I have a very hard time picking my desert island yarn, but this would <laughs> definitely be on a very short list. Um, uh so uh this Beautiful is colors as well yeah um this is this is sheep this is the natural gray um as the main color and i believe this is night night sky mm -hmm. yeah i'm showing the back of um on Lena. dark blue uh in the contrasting color and marina has a lot of different um absolutely gorgeous colors available that really lend themselves very well to color work um so yeah and she has a shipment a new shipment of yarn coming in so because that's yep. the thing a lot of the small um yarn producers with covid and everything it's kind of made it really mm -hmm. tricky to get yarn um yeah, yeah. but it's always well worth the wait for me absolutely yeah. so yeah that's great news okay shall i move on to the next one? Oh, we probably will be here all day um, oh which marina's is fun, actually but... watching hi marina is marina here hi yeah. marina oh. okay next one so, unity so the next one is unity, unity. by crystal hyatt um, yeah. and the yarn is erica knight and I'm just, again, Eric it's another one of my, Yeah, I love this photo of Lena. Isn't that so cute? Good, isn't it? Oh, and I love the smell of that cardigan. Erica Knight oh. British Blue 100. Speaking of Marina, Erica Knight British Blue 100 is one of Marina's secret favorite yarns. Or not secret, I don't know if it's a secret Marina. Um, <laughs> I hope it's not. <laughs> but we were talking about this a while ago that it's such a it's a really really good yarn and not that many people know about it or use it um, i've never used it yeah and it's I'm so cool. nice okay let me yeah. try and show this um show this off properly maybe Claire, you can show some pictures because um yes. i'm not entirely sure if i can do it justice so unity is an open front cardigan um you can customize it to whichever length you want. So in the version that we have in the um, in the magazine, it hits um, sort of at the mid mid bum, like here, mid bum, very professional. Mid bum, uh, yeah, that's mid -bum. good. Um, uh, it has three quarter length sleeves um, without any shaping. So Lena wears this in the magazine over a long sleeve shirt, which I love as a look. I, so I think that. this is a great, great layering piece. Um, it's knit top down with raglan increases. And I'm going to move a bit closer to the camera so that you can actually see this gorgeous, gorgeous zigzags. Like this is like a zigzag stitch pattern so that is nice. worked on the shawl collar, the cuffs, hem, and also the pockets. That's my favorite thing, the pockets. Yep. And it's such a great pattern. I think it really stands out super well against the stockinette fabric of the body. Mm. Um, and it's clean and simple and not boring. And I really, really like it. Um, I love it. Yeah. Uh, it's also, if you're not one of the, one of the people who doesn't knit, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't really like 
picking up button bands or shawl colors or stuff like that. Mm. Um, because to a me, it feels like don't. you're you're knitting an entire thing and you think you're done and then you're not done. <laughs> so See, it's one of my favorite parts. Isn't that weird? Really? Yeah, uh -huh. because that's when it's like, oh my God, it's a thing. Hmm, I don't okay. know what it is. I just, it just no, turns into like- No, it's like, fascinating that, but yeah. yeah. You don't like um, long rows though, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so, so this one for, for people who have similar preferences to mine, good news because you're working the color at the same time as the body. That is nice. Um, that is nice. Yeah. And you wanted to share something about the pockets, didn't you? I just love the pockets. Um, I love that they're in that texture. I love that they're on, it's hard. I think it's hard to knit a pocket. Mm. Sounds very philosophical, but I think it's hard to knit a pocket and it not look really bulky. And yes. like, and yes. I think it can look really nice off when you're not wearing it. It's like, ooh, that's a cute pocket. And then you get it on and it can look really bulky and slightly and off. Kind of flappy. Yeah, it doesn't sit against the thing mm. or it's slightly in the wrong place. So I was kind of like, because I remember Crystal sent a picture of it when she'd done the sample and I was mm. like, ooh, that's really nice. I wonder how it's going to yeah. look on with the pockets though. And then as soon as I saw the photos of Lena, I was like, oh, those pockets work so well. Yeah. So, because they look like a usable pocket, I think, which is in knitwear sometimes. It's like, they look okay. But as soon as you put anything in them, they'd be, it'd be flappy yeah. and weird. And so no, I love the pockets on this one. Yeah, I think it's also that the zigzag stitch just gives them that a bit more structure. Yeah. And if they were worked in plain stockinette, so yeah, that was a definitely. very good choice, Crystal. So yeah, very so good. that was Unity by Crystal Hyatt. Oh, I'm just sorry. I got distracted by the chat in the thing. <laughs> Easily Ooh. distracted. So uh, people, no so Marina um, listed pre-orders on her website for Mendip DK, which is amazing. So the yarn is already with her. Um, so if you want to knit Sarcactus or I will have another pattern in Mendip DK, um, then go ahead to marinaskewa.com. Place an order. It's worth it. It is. It's yeah. definitely worth it. Okay. Shall I go on to the next one? Yes, because please. Renata, we are up to rip party. Yay! Rip oh, party! <gasps> oh my god, my sense of um, my sense of direction in the camera is abysmal today. I apologize. Um, yeah, but for me it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, rip party. I love these socks. Me so, too. I think you need to down. probably show them show them in the in the in the thingy in the magazine again. again. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the next page. Yeah. Oh, and we're doing it again. Back this way. But sorry, you were saying so they're knit top down. So from the cuff uh, down. Cuff down. And um they're really beginner friendly because they're all knits and pearls, but it's a rib, but then it shifts like off. So yeah. it's it's quite, if you've not tackled um, socks before, then this would be a good place to start because it's pretty straightforward. Um, except it's still straightforward, but let's check out the heel because the heel's kind of, the heel. that's where the party is in the heel. The heel is really cool. So I love the heel. So you're starting here, right? Like you're knitting from the cuff yeah. down and then you, then you do the gusset increases, but you do them here and then right. you turn a heel and you end up with this really cool looking and honestly really well fitting heel. Um, and you don't even have to pick up any stitches. I want to make some for foot. Chris. I yeah, like these that. are really, these are really, really nice. Um, and sort of like on the foot, you have the same pattern. Uh, the 
the rib pattern oh this is really not showing up too well um and then on the sole it's just plain stockinette um and they're so fun i think they're so fun to knit they must be so fun to knit and they fit so well because ribbing for the longest time i couldn't wrap my head around ripped socks i'll be honest but lately i've come around and yeah yeah they're just really they're really comfy really oh, well, really you, comfy if you're not a super confident like with your gauge and they also if i probably shouldn't say this but if you're lazy with your gauge swatch on a sock as well ripped yeah. ones would be really forgiving because True. they're gonna fit probably yeah i think you have to do something really weird for rib socks not to yeah. fit like yeah so which would also by the way make them perfect for gift knitting because yeah. if you're not sure about your gift recipient's foot size you know this will be very forgiving yeah They're, i think like, chris is gonna have some in his stocking this year. <gasps> that's a great yeah. idea um yeah, let's quickly talk socks. about the yarn because this yes. yarn is actually quite close to from where i am currently sitting it's uh by tulliver yarn the lovely elke is a wonderful dyer who lives in berlin and dies on the outskirts of berlin and she has this beautiful high twist sock yarn it's all natural sock yarn as it says in the name it's a high twist which makes it perfectly like perfectly suitable for socks Mm -hmm. uh, because it makes the yarn a lot more durable. And this is a colorway dyed with indigo. And I love Elka's yarn. So I good. love Elka's yarn. I've used it a few times um, and it's always beautiful and the mm. colors are always lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So Renata, your wonderful socks. Thank you so much for working with us. Uh, oh, Marla asks, are you shipping to the US now? Yes, we are. We can mm -hmm. ship to the US. Um, the only place we can't ship at the moment, unfortunately, is still Australia. Um, I think that's the only country, isn't it? Um, but we are we are good for the US. So yes. if you any US, we found a way, and there. it's actually quite uh, honestly, it goes quite fast. Like the first, we already shipped a couple of batches of orders to the US in the last few weeks, and the orders arrived, I think, within a week in a within a week and a half you okay yeah you kind of froze on my end i'm not entirely sure if i'm frozen on your end i did i think i'm sure what's happening i have frozen in the most horrendous look ever i kind of like a um, really angry hamster. <laughs> if you see what I'm seeing, it's not yes. attractive, but never mind. <laughs> You're starting your move. <laughs> oh no, I think we just. <laughs> oh, um... Ooh, sorry, that was worrying. Oh, I think I think we're getting we're coming back. Yeah, I think we're coming that was back. That unfortunate. What an unfortunate <laughs> place to freeze. Holy <laughs> smoke. Uh, uh, now I'm all red because I have to love so hard. Okay, let's move on from I'm the... so sorry. If, um, if, oh no, I can see it on, um, I can see it on there. I did freeze like that. That's how everyone can see. If you couldn't hear us then as we froze, uh, we apologize. We are back. Um, I'm sorry about my face. Uh, let's move on swiftly. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. Good. Next one. Good. <laughs> Acorn. <gasps> yeah. I've got to tell you. Acorn. So this is coming from someone who doesn't like to knit lace very much. I keep getting drawn back to Acorn, which rhymes. Um, I can't blame you. Oh, there's something about it. Do you know what I think it is? Um, I think it's a combination of lace with this yarn, um, yeah. which is yarn on the house, yoth yarns. I think because it's woolly, it's like a woollier mm -hmm. 
more rustic and the lace is something about it which i think is a perfect pairing for subverting the norm because normally lace is knitting very kind of delicate fingering not always obviously but it's normally in quite soft yarns maybe with like silken or merino um mm. so there's something about seeing it in this like rustic yarn yeah, which i absolutely love there's, um, it's gorgeous. So oh, Acorn is a design by Ash Alberg, who you might know as Sunflower Knit. And um, it's no secret, I love Ash. Um, and their design aesthetic, um, they themselves describe it as lace for all. And I think this is a perfect example of this um, because of the stitch itself which is intuitive and not too, you know, like, I think it would be fun. I've, I've not knit this, but I think it would be quite easy to memorize. So lace for all yeah, in a sense, like you don't need to be a super experienced lace knitter, but also lace for all in the sense of no matter how you identify what your, you know, style is or anything, you can make this work for you as Claire said, by pairing yeah. this with this yarn, I think like I absolutely, absolutely love it. So Yoth Yarn's daughter, um, quite heavyweight for uh, uh, for a lace shawl. Um, so good. I and love it. it. Smells I honestly, so good. yeah. And I love that and, color. Yeah, it's it's, it's chocolate. So the color it's called. Yeah, it's a triangular shawl, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, and uh, and and it's big enough one of the things that i always look out for in shawl is if it's big enough so that you can wrap it around like this i need which you totally need it yeah perfect. i don't like it when they slip off no um, no yeah so I as absolutely oh this is it. gorgeous yeah. you know what what's happening right now right. Right. i have this thing where you know like we're working about 15 months on the publication yeah there's mm -hmm. this time period where I like I don't want to look at it anymore. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And then, usually around launch day, and today it's happening right now, I fall in love with the patterns again. And I have this thing where I'm looking at every single thing that, that I'm pulling out of the sample pile. I'm like, I want to knit this. <gasps> I want to knit this. I want to knit this too. It's true. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, which is dangerous because there isn't any time. But no, I yeah. do the exact same thing because you get so. So I go through the photos constantly because of mm. putting them on Instagram and in the newsletter and the things, and you kind of get like blind to them a little bit. I don't yeah. know, like. And yeah, no, I'm ex as soon as the thing came, I was like, oh my god! I was sat like geekly reading lace charts before I went to bed, going, "How's that done?" And you know. Yeah, it's how we Ooh, roll with people. That's, yeah, that's super cool. Super Next cool. One. Okay, stirring the difference. Yay! Yay! Such a cool name for such a cool pattern. I love this. Is one of those patterns when um, <clears throat> I first saw it. Um, I was like, oh, "What is this? How's that done?" It's like one of those like. Ooh, this is fun. Is it color work? Is it what is that? And um and I love it. So it's just alternating colours and then yeah. once you get I'm right in the once you get to the um zigzag section, those are all slip stitches. Like is that what it is or is it then uh, I'll be honest, I don't know. <laughs> I'm blanking right now. Oh, that's Tilly. Tilly. Um, so um, she has Julia Exner is the designer behind this fabulous pattern. And she's devised a really clever method of A, making those stripes jockless yeah. so, so that the yoke actually looks really nice and smooth. Um, and also doing these triangles here. Um, uh, I think looking at the inside, I'm no. it right now. 
your um invisible your... stranding see this is where i keep exactly. getting confused yeah because I, it's a technique i've never done before this is why i keep getting confused yeah um, and obviously you're doing the same on um, what how is this happening which i find super interesting because that's what issue four is all about is trying different yeah. techniques and doing a twist exactly. so there's been so many times i've been looking through thinking what is what is that about like yeah. how is that happening which is so much fun so they will require invisible stranding holding the inactive yarn in the back on the right side rows and in front on the wrong side rows unless working a ladder stitch that's super it's cool. I'm, really I'm gonna have to, cool that I, yeah i'm gonna have to try that at some point because yeah it confuses me and also really intrigues me at the same time so I would definitely put that pattern in if you are looking for a little bit of like not a challenge but you definitely want to learn a new skill yeah I think this is going to be the pattern because I'm a little bit obsessed with it it's so nice it's so good and it's also full of these little details this is yeah if you've been sort of following what I do for, for a little while, you know that I'm obsessing over little details that make things special. And this pattern is just full of them. So one thing is that, um, you know, the yoke is worked in stockinette and then the sleeves and body are worked in reverse stockinette. Um, but all of them are worked in these like one row stripes or one round stripes. And you're, you're working with the main color throughout the entire the entire piece but you're switching your contrasting color from the yoke to the body and sleeves which i think like both the switch and color like combined with the switch and texture is so nice like it's just so yeah. good it's one of those unexpected things where you're looking at it and you're like it just makes it a little bit extra special mm. you know um I so, so i absolutely love that and the other thing that i really like is that julia has you work um the neckline button band uh hem and cuffs um in the main color only which i think creates kind of like a picture frame for the rest of the for the rest of the cardigan that's how i keep thinking about it you know it kind of frames kind of the rest of the cardigan it ties it all in and it mm. keeps it from getting too busy um and i love a good stripe like i love i love stripes um and so i think it's just such a nice way to put the focal point on the stripes and keep it from getting too yeah too busy as i said i love it and it's hard for it again it's one of those things where the design has been so clever in that if you put all that down on paper that could very easily get very busy if you're not careful yeah, um, totally she's done a wonderful job let's talk about the it. yarn for a second yes. which yarn has she used Wildcut yarns yes hi carmen and team not sure if you're watching this if you are we love you um walcott yarns opus base uh beautiful bl hi tilly tilly agrees Quit. beautiful um beautiful wool alpaca blend um absolutely gorgeous oh, gorgeous absolutely gorgeous mm. i have a soft spot for alpaca. yeah you know what i'll be honest i've met one thing in alpaca yarn not a fan this has me converted there's something nice. to it i actually have a skein i love alpaca here. yarn it's just so nice i mean 70 percent merino only 30 percent alpaca there's something to it that's just it's still toothy yeah it's just really good yeah and I, people yeah, I, I think it looks beautiful yeah well cut yarns has put together kits on their website for the cardigan and they have the most beautiful colors available Thank so you. you'll have a kit in the original colors then there's a version 
that substitutes that light blue turquoise with a mustard yellow. There's a version with white and two greens. There's a version with two grays and a mustard yellow. It's just, I flipped through Trello. them all. So nice. Um, oh, I've, linked to to their, yeah. I've linked to their, um, to their post about this in our Instagram stories. So if you're looking at this and you're like, ooh, I really like this, uh, mm -hmm. head over to Instagram when we're done and click through to our stories and then um, get yourself some Walcott Yarns Opus. Ooh. It's really nice. I want them. Hmm. Can't blame awesome. you. Awesome. <laughs> but don't don't let me though, because I have too much yarn. Um, I'll tell to get all the things off my needles. I'm gonna be knitting for another two years before I can start anything new. But you know I will. Um, yeah. And talking of that, look what is up next. Multitudes. Multitudes. <gasps> this was designed by Hannah Lisa. And guess what I have the yarn for? This is going on my needles because it is officially, I mean, I'm in my woolly jumper. It's officially autumn here and I need mm. a yellow hat, like, desperately. Oh my God, that color on you. Ooh. <gasps> so All good. the yellows. Mm. All the it's going to be so good. I can't wait. Um, so yeah, that's why I need to get things off my needles and um, so I can knit it because I'm so excited. I know I sound like a big old suck up, but when I was going through it, I actually I was going through all the photos, I didn't realize this was yours at all. And um, you know, I'm a sucker for yellow wool and I'm a sucker for cables and a bobble. And I was like, ooh, that yellow hat, I'm gonna have that. And then I realized you've done it. And I was like, I'm a Lisa. It's so cool. I really love it. I love how, um, I'm gonna show people instead of just banging yeah. out about it. I love how um, the ribbing goes up into these cables right there. I love the bobble. I just love everything about it. Thank you so, so much. I'm really excited about it. What was your inspiration behind this design, Hannah Lisa? Uh, <laughs> I wanted to play. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> um, you know, um, two years ago, I designed the near end far socks for making stories and friends. It was a DK weight sock pattern that had uh, like a big cable pattern run up the foot and the leg. I don't know if any one of you watching this remembers this. It's my favorite sock pattern to date. Um, and I really, because of the scale of the cable on the foot and i really wanted to play with scale again for this hat and so i was looking for a cable pattern that would work well um but also kind of size well um and then i wanted something to complement it so i was looking for like tiny cables and big cables and so this is where this it. combination came from and then bobbles because bobbles are always fun um, i love a cheeky bubble like just yeah. like, not too many because they can get a little bit after a while, but I yeah. love a bobble. Yeah. No, I really like it. Um, and I decided to put all of those cables on a reverse stockinette background just because I find that um, it makes them pop a little bit more. I felt it would get yeah. too fussy and the cables wouldn't be crisp enough or clear enough um, if it was just on, on a pure stockinette background. And then pom-poms because always pom-poms always and i love uh, working perfect. with this yarn um this was tammy's yarn wing and a prayer farm yarn that i've been wanting to knit with for forever i love tammy's work um and um yeah uh this yarn is uh, spun from hayden and olivia's please and uh, i love that i love it Dyed with belt. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. Oh, you know what I'm just so realizing? Nice. I get to keep the sample. Oh yeah, because it's yours. 
It looks so good on you as well. We're going to be hat buddies. We're going to be hat buddies. I love it. And it fits perfectly. Oh, okay. It looks so nice. Yeah. Alrighty. Yeah. Let's move on to the next pattern. I think yep. my beloved partner and my beloved child just came home, which means that um, I'll have checked okay. in a few days in a little while. Let's so. step it up. Wayfarer. <gasps> no, but we'll take our time with it. It's just that, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. This is not going to be possible to show you this so claire <laughs> has to show you uh the photo of it wayfarer is an absolutely beautiful massive shawl designed by the wonderful maria muscarella who you might know as ninja chickens um amazing woman with a wonderful podcast um and it's knit in biche et buche le petit lamb's wool um okay i'm very much struggling <laughs> to do this justice maria i'm so sorry okay so um this you know uh if you've if you have any of our previous issues you know we love a good recipe style pattern so recipe style patterns are patterns that give you instructions but allow you to modify them so that you can knit something to make the most out of the yarn that you have or um, select stitch patterns that you love. Um, and um, Maria has done exactly that with Wayfarer. So it's designed so that you can knit up four full fingering weight skeins. And she's giving you um, stitch patterns for, for each of the section. Um, but also how to modify them so that you can substitute your own stitch pattern you know or maybe switch them swap them within the shawl um so it starts Which you start so at the fun. tip it's so much fun and you knit um in one of the colors and there's this little stripy section which i love i'm obsessed with the switch so to the next color have this gorgeous textured section switch to the next mm. section a little bit of lace switch to the next section which has this gorgeous almost full cable kind of texture that doesn't really come across on the screen um and then you end with a lovely textured border that's kind of chevron like and it's just Oh, it's pretty. I love it. Um, and I love patterns that make the most out of out of the yarn. Um, and this yeah. is really so she has you weigh, for example, your like the lighter, the lightest color that, that she used in her sample at the beginning, so that you are sure to have enough for the border at the end and, oh. and things like that, which I think is That's so awesome. so smart. Um and what a labor of love. Like knitting this sample, Maria. Wow. It's gigantic. And it's, it's perfect. It's huge. It's like. It must have taken forever. Yeah. It's a blanket and a shawl and a baby blanket and all of these good things in one. And I absolutely love it. And I kind of want to make but a version in neutrals. I think that would look really fun. Maybe with like one and pop it's of color. Light. And it's light enough as well that even though it's huge, you can kind of like fold it down and pop it away and then bring yeah. it out and great for traveling with. Mm. I bet it'd be great True. whenever we can True. officially go on airplanes again. Um, it'd be great for traveling yeah. in. It's, it's yeah. chilly. Well, it's and I mean, with a pop of color would yeah. be lovely. And I mean, Bichy Bush, um, their yarns are just gorgeous. I've never used them yet. I've always yeah. wanted to, though. All right. I've yeah. gotten the five-minute warning. Five-minute warning. Oh, yeah. we better move on then. Um, yeah. Okay. We bones. have two more, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, yes. Bones. Yes. Okay. Bones. bones. <gasps> do, 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 so this do, do, do. is by Julie Robinson, and the yarn yep. is BC Garn. Bisigan Loch Lomond held double actually. And 
I'll be right back. I'm just gonna close the door really quickly. Okay. It looks so squishy. This is again, is another one of my favorite pictures of Vina. Such a good picture. So Gorgeous. this is like a big, big hug. And it's a cardigan that I would totally wear as an outer layer during like cooler fall days. Like not for winter, mm -hmm. definitely not. Um, no. But it's thick enough, um, which is also why she has you knit this in pieces. Um, I think it would be not very well manageable if you knit it in in, no, uh, it'd be too in one piece. Plus, the seams actually give it structure, which I think is really smart. Um, and it has this gorgeous slip stitch rib pattern, which I'm obsessed Ooh. with. It's so Ooh, good. I like that. Super, super good. Plus, ribbed sleeves. So really well fitting. Yeah. And again, pockets. And a good pocket, again. And a good pocket. It's like, it doesn't look floppy. It looks awesome. No. I, as soon as I saw this cardigan, I was like, I can imagine getting up and over my pajamas on winter Ooh, when it's been yeah. snowing and like getting a hot cup of coffee. Um, yeah. It just looks so cozy totally i love I it i love the buttons on it yeah there's a beautiful post by one of our test learners and also now part of our tech editing team jessica up on um instagram she's tested this for us she's taken some Did beautiful she? pictures and written some very lovely things about this Ooh, and us um, what? yeah oh so nice. such a nice so this is bones by julie robinson um absolutely Gorgeous, gorgeous cardigan. Gorgeous. I love okay. it. We actually have um, we have a quick question from yeah. um, Audi. Um, is there a stick involved in the making of the sweater? I'm guessing she's asking about stirring the difference. Is there a stick involved nope. in that? Because I was half wondering that because it does look like the could, it could be steeped, but it's not. Isn't it? Flat, I think isn't you it? could. I think you could modify it to be steeped if that is your preference. Mm -hmm. If you want to work it in in the round and then steep it afterwards, I, I don't think it's written well. for a steep. Yeah. No, I know what you yeah. mean though, um, because I thought that because it almost looks like it's been stitched here. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Okay. Frost beam. Frost beam. Yay. This is again from Marina. With Mendy. And this is Mendy for ply, is it? No, this is also DK. Oh, DK. I thought we have four ply in here. No, it's both DK. I get confused. Oh, it looks okay. so nice. I love the color combination of this. The color combination is awesome. And again, I'm struggling to show this shape, which is a shame because it's a really unusual shape. It's a parallelogram. Um, yes. And you work it from, from one tip. Choo -choo 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 all the way to the other tip and you work the border at the same time as the lace body it's an Ooh, awesome construction awesome. and i really 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 want to make it um and i absolutely and love I it it's one of those cases again where we have lace paired with a beautifully rustic yarn I say rustic in the in the best sense of that word like i love rustic oh, yeah. it's like sheepy and full of woolly goodness and it's just so nice. I love, I love it. this photo. This is one of my favorite. I keep saying this, yeah. but this is one of my favorite photos. Yeah. It's so nice. It's so good. Oh, mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, okay. I'll be honest. Like I said, I hardly ever knit lace, but all the lace patterns in this book, I've been like, mm -hmm. knit that. Yeah. So yeah. that brings us to our last pattern. Um, that was the last pattern. Um, yeah. Oof. There's wow. a lot of patterns in there. There's a lot of patterns in there. Um, I think it's also time for us to wrap it up. Yes. Five past five. We've been at it for over an hour. <laughs> um, maybe if you guys want to, we can do another sort of like session like yeah. this towards the end of the week. We have a few wonderful guests lined up for Making Stories Knits With for the next few weeks, which is when we'll be talking about the articles and illustration, um, mm -hmm. because we'll have those. 
people featured on here, which I'm so excited. Ah, <laughs> love like, it. Oof. It's been yeah, a busy long so day, but it's been so good. Goodness, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I, um, we should definitely do another one delving into maybe the details um, showing yeah. up the articles and things another time. But um, but yeah, Absolutely. until then, definitely tune in to our episodes of Main Stories Knits With. And yeah. if you want to make sure you don't miss any you and you're not already, you can subscribe to our channel. And if you like this video, we always appreciate a little thumbs up. Yes. So, and if you little, have any um, questions, just send us a comment. Um, yeah. I would love to keep talking to you. But I've gotten the second five minute warning. I'm like, I gotta run. <laughs> you go. <laughs> Alrighty, lovelies. Thank, Thank you, you so much does. for tuning in. You can get issue four in our web shop now or go support one of our lovely stockists. Thank you so much to everyone who watched, who contributed to this beautiful issue. We can't wait to celebrate yeah. the launch with you this week. Yeah. Alrighty, lovelies. Bye bye. Oh, that's gonna be so good.